Hey, hey, happy Friday, everyone. Welcome, I am Meredith. I am here with our message for the 7th of June, 2024. We're using Bonefire Tarot for our message today. We have the sun in Gemini, the moon is in Cancer, Pluto's still hanging retrograde in Capricorn. We're there till October. Uh, and then of course, I've left out the planetary alignment from Monday, those cards, because this was rare, this is rare and uncommon energy that's had a great uh, resonance within us. It has quite a big influence on our spiritual journey work, <clears throat> excuse me, in the now. So it's influencing all of the readings. Let's see what the cards have to say for us today. Interesting shuffle too, by the way. Take a look at all the cards down here. First, we have the moon Ooh, showing up again for us, and it's paired with Six of Swords. This is a deep combination as I look at it right now. You know, the moon speaks to our intuition, which is a message that's been hugely on repeat for us. Um, though, when I see the moon, I... I I am tuned into what's rising from our depths and how we are seeing what's rising within us in a different light, in a different perspective. And it's paired with the Six of Swords, which is energy that we're moving on from. Typically, the Six of Swords is a card that speaks to moving out of unfavorable conditions into much more favorable conditions. And I kind of feel like with the planetary alignment we had on Monday, we're still resonating in the frequency of the eclipses that we had, which touched off a whole lot of deep inner journey work, which has been wonderful. Maybe a little uncomfortable, though wonderful. I feel the connection to all of that here in just these two cards. I feel like we took a very deep dive and we've been on the rise from that deep dive. And we've been making a lot of personal self-relationship discoveries on how to up-level our frequency from old worn-out programming and behavior, things that we learned very early on in our life, things that we have modeled after for our whole life. And we're challenging all of it. We saw that in yesterday's reading in a big way. So I love seeing the moon here with the Six of Swords because this is indicative of our progress. So we're moving out of energies that do not serve us for our now moment and our oncoming. Excellent. So let's see what comes next. <laughs> nice. The Knight of Pentacles, our slowest mover. <laughs> I know some of you just went, oh no, not this guy. Here's the good news about the Knight of Pentacles. He doesn't miss anything, all right? Let's back up a moment and return to that Six of Swords. Remember that Sixes are about harmony and balance. So we're harmonizing our energy and we recently saw the, the Justice card and we're asking ourselves off that card, is my heart as light as a feather? And wherever you get a no on that, there's opportunity for validation, compassion, and a reaffirmation of what's fresh, true, and new for you. So this is excellent here. This is actually uh, fantastic. And you don't want to miss any of the details. Otherwise, you've got to come back around and deal with them again, right? So we're taking a good look at everything. And we are not necessarily moving swiftly through this energy. Though we are staying in momentum. And I feel like... The reason we're not moving swiftly is so we can be exquisitely present with ourselves and discover those nuances within our own personality that have been programmed into us and we get to question, is this working for me? <laughs> and if it isn't, what can I do differently? How can I think differently? How might I show up? differently for myself. Let's see what's next. There's three cards here. This ought to be great. <laughs> and our first is nice, the five of swords. Cool, because we've got the five of swords with the six of swords. 
So we're really uh, plucking away at some things. This is a pretty serious debate one has with oneself. And the character there in the background, she's walking into the sunrise or sunset, however you prefer to see that. And then there's this like ego battle going on over here. I've actually experienced this in the last 24 hours. I caught myself having a thought about something my mom said when I was a child and she said it often. And I realized that I was still connected to that in my own programming. So woohoo, I got to see it, look at it and go, WTF, why am I still walking around with that? And that's cool, that's exciting, right? So that's dealing with your, uh, with the things within the ego that it is manufacturing and remanufacturing, resurrecting over and over and over again in a vulture thought and you get to see it and you don't rush through it. We don't rush through it which is awesome because we don't necessarily need to repeat this leg of the journey any longer. So we're moving on. So fabulous. Next. Excellent. Yes. Cause there's the magician. So we're making magic out of this truly. And that's how I feel about discovering an old thought that's been living with me for several decades now. And I didn't even realize it was there. So I am super excited to identify that it is temporarily uncomfortable it actually produced a couple body symptoms, but okay, I'm all right with that. I can handle that and I can show up with my compassion and my pure raw love and I can acknowledge and validate that this is old news that my ego seems to be attached to and we're all doing this on some level. So yes, I'm using myself as an example, but we're all doing this on some level in our experiences in the now and in the ways that we interact with others who grace us with their presence, right? So we're making magic out of this because as above, so below, right? And it all meets in the heart space and what's rising out of our depth, seeking harmonization, seeking balance in a steady, grounded, loving way. Well, the Five of Swords is gonna show us all of that and the magician is going to help us direct our will because that's what's at the core of the magician card. It's directing one's will. There is nothing outside of you that can make the change. It's all about your self relationship and how you are in heart space. One of the beauties of the magician card is that he, she, the magician has all the tools of the tarot at their disposal, right? Though they don't use any of them. Instead, the magician directs directs the will and that's the that's how we move onward. So I'm directing my will through my heart space for anything that shows up within ego chatter because that's the best <laughs> indicator of something that needs your attention, your love, compassion, kindness, and then an opportunity to say, wow, hey, I get to change this. How exciting, how good can this get is such a great question to ask when you discover these uh, experiences with yourself. And you know, because we talk about this all the time here, when you shift it in yourself, you shift it in every relationship you have. How beautiful, because you get to show up in a way uh, you really do desire to be met. <laughs> I could elaborate on that some and well, we'll let that go for now. I think we can all resonate to this very well. And when we are in such raw authenticity and presence and self relationship, we can see the choices. We can hear the words um, that have been ingrained in us out of habit and behavior and we can address that in a way that's different so theme of the week really new question is how can i think about this differently how can i show up in a different way what do i have to believe in the now right to change this situation this is going to up level your energy your frequency in a big way when you ask questions like that and be prepared to be mildly uncomfortable with some of the things that rise up in your self-relationship 
And then you have to be brave and courageous enough not to project that onto other relationships because it all starts with you. We're all really good at pointing a finger and maybe issuing some blame through the ego awareness. We're great at it because who wants to take responsibility for any of this BS, right? The reason we're here is so we can, right? We're working on ourselves. We recognize that it all starts with us and we're all one. So what kind of love do you want to show up in? <laughs> wow. Oh, nice. And then <laughs> why don't we add just another layer of fun to the whole thing with the tower? This is excellent though. This is something to be very excited about because if we don't ask ourselves these, ourselves these questions, if we don't ever address the things that we find ourselves whining, bitching, complaining about, right? How are we gonna make any change? How are we gonna take down a tower? <laughs> Slowly, <laughs> with the Knight of Pentacles, of course. But regardless, we're doing it. And we're recognizing that when we take down a tower, we're adjusting what we consider our boundaries. And we're taking a look at everything that's been hidden behind that wall, aren't we? So where do you have boundaries with yourself? <laughs> and why do you have them there? What purpose do they serve? And these boundaries, were they handed to you? Was this standard uh, handed to you somewhere else? Is it something you actually believe? Is it true for you or are you demonstrating modeled behavior from others that had great influence in your life? Check it out. Ooh, powerful stuff. Nice. And doing so brings out the sun. Now this is the second day in a row that we're seeing the sun, the happiest card in tarot. That's supercharged, happy, loving, blissful energy shining in every aspect of your life because you have the courage to ask these questions and address these issues that may have turned into challenges for you. Yeah, excellent. Let's see what's next. Oh, perfect. And there's the full, the very beginning of the major arcana, a new beginning and a fresh start because you're trailblazing in your spiritual journey and you're blazing a new trail in a new frequency that has been up leveled and you've let go of old things that, you know, don't serve. And that's fabulous. And it sounds so nice and sweet as we say it here on the channel. And we look at these cards though we all know every single one of us, what kind of investment it takes to do this spiritual journey work. So congratulations yet again, and, you know, some of my friends, are, you know, they'll email me or text me and they'll send me a short off of YouTube or something off of Instagram. And I have to say this kind of message is showing up over and over and over again. You want to live free. You want to live liberated. You want to live in the beautiful expression of your soulful presence. Well, then all this other stuff that's been resurrected and recycled time and again through the ego has to be given some of your attention so that you can ask the question, does this serve? If the answer is no, how do I think about it differently? What do I, what could I be believing right now that could change the frequency of this whole thing? So believe in the love that you are. We've got choices all the time. It boil, they boil down consistently to choosing love, choosing fear. And anything that is rooted in fear is grabbing our attention. It's being validated. It's being confirmed. And then we have the opportunity to ask that question of how good can this get? How can I do this differently? How do I show up in a way where I truly would like to be met without any kind of resistance or holding any kind of standard of expectation so that I too am showing up free and liberated in total love. <laughs> wow. Let's take a look at the bottom of the deck and see what's on offer to us. First card, Eight of Wands. Now a swift moving energy. And I find this kind of comical too, because it happens just like the High Priestess and the Death card show up on this tarot table together. Oftentimes we'll see a slower moving energy, Knight of Pentacles, 
show up with a swift moving energy. So here's the Eight of Wands. And that's definitely swift moving. It's incoming in for information. Usually a conversation to be had with someone who's near and dear. You're hearing from someone and you are communicating with one another. And likely that communication is inspirational and generates epiphany where we begin to see in much greater detail through our intuitive awareness how our energy is being woven together and what we're actually creating by what we are putting our energy focus upon. Let's see what's next. Yeah, because we're ushering in the Ten of Pentacles. This is a card that's been showing up for us a great deal lately. And the Ten of Pentacles is the everything card in tarot. It's all about living within your legacy of happiness and adding on layers of more happiness to that, which is why we're taking down towers, which is why we're having conversations in self-relationship where we have settled for less because we're in resistance to something rooted in the ego that's having us live smaller than we desire to live. Wow. Yeah, so relax. <laughs> So now we have the four, five, and six of swords on the table. Pretty amazing. This is rest, relaxation for the spiritual warrior, and I like this. This is a card that's also indicative of the message. When it looks like nothing's happening, everything's happening. And it's all going on behind the scenes, though it's emerging through that moon card. This is what's rising. Our peace is rising. Our love, our bliss, our happiness rising. And we're blazing a brand new trail for ourselves because we've taken down the walls that our ego has erected around some belief system BS that doesn't serve us in the now. And we're so super excited about doing that that it makes great magic in our lives. So we're willing to take a look at what we're, our ego is dishing up so that we can live more fully expressed through our soulful presence. And then the Six of Pentacles, such a beautiful card. This opens us up to generosity, reciprocity. Our giving and receiving comes much more into harmony and balance because this is the way we are choosing to up-level our frequency. And then we have one more, Four of Cups. Yes, see, three, three cups celebrated. Three of Cups is all about celebration. And when we count our blessings and we focus on that up-leveled energy and that frequency that is so much more fulfilling for us, we naturally become a magnet for more Ace of Cups energy. And that's what the Four promises by counting one's blessings and taking a look at all of the things that don't serve and just bringing unconditional love, compassion, and kindness to that. We, we make a new pathway for ourselves to receive love, bliss, joy, happiness on overflow and in a very stable way. Hmm. Two fours, two sixes in the reading. Lots of happiness here as well between the sun, the ten of pentacles. Great, great intuition for our journey. So stick with it. Keep doing what you're doing. It's amazing. All right, angel answers. If you have a question or if you're looking for a confirmation, put it to the deck while I shuffle. Let the cards bring you an answer. Ooh. <laughs> Let go. I like that it shows up consistently for us. As soon as you identify the energy that has you living smaller and showing up in a way that's less than for yourself, you can bring your love, compassion, and kindness to it and then let go of it. Very sweet. And be assertive. Yes. That's not a problem for us. We have a passion for this now. <laughs> Next we have, oh, this one just continues. I love it. No need to worry. No, there's nothing at all to worry about here because this is you being assertive, taking action to let go of an energy that does not serve your journey. That's something to celebrate four of cups all the time. Ten of pentacles, sun. One more.
just flipped over and it's in here just a little bit stuck. There we go. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Listen to your intuition. Hmm. <laughs> Could the cards shine a better spotlight on that message? No, I don't think so. All right, final word from Angels and Ancestors. How is our soulful presence informing our waking consciousness? Wow, I think this is a connection or confirmation to the Knight of Pentacles again. We have the Knight. Be brave and honest. Yeah, be courageous in your honesty with your self-relationship. Be courageous enough to take a look at what your ego is resurrecting because that resurrection is a gift and it is for you to examine and let go of whatever is showing up in the now is a blessing. Even if it's uncomfortable, allow that discomfort to be the flag to get your attention, to bring your heart centered focus to an energy that just wishes to roll tower out of your, or off of, rather, your foundation. Wow. Excellent. Hey, have a happy weekend, everyone. Peace, love, joy, blessings. Namaste.